welcome to My Narrowboat Life. And this is the first of uh, what I hope will be a regular video that I'm gonna make all about my life on a narrowboat. If you don't know who I am, I'm Bones, and I live on a narrowboat called Crucible. Now, the likelihood is if you're watching this, you're probably following me on Instagram um, or Facebook under some sort of form of either follow my narrowboat life or my narrowboat life. Or you might be watching it on YouTube, I suppose. So uh, basically, I'm just gonna try and make videos, like probably I'm gonna try and make them every week uh, about what it's like to live on a narrowboat, um, they're not going to be instructional videos or anything like that. They're just going to be literally what's going on, um, what it actually involves. I guess people are always asking me, um, you know, what are the pros and cons of living on a narrowboat? And I figured the easiest way to show it is just to make videos and show you the kind of things that you're up against, but also the joys of living on a narrowboat. Uh, and so as the first video today, the thing I've got to do today is I've got to clean the flue of my chimney, which is very exciting and probably paint some bits of rust on the side of my boat. So there you go, that gives you an indication of some of the daily chores that aren't that great that you have to do on a narrow boat. Uh, so without further ado, I'll get on with some of that and I'll speak to you later, bye. All right, so this is the chimney on the outside. And these are the tools that I've got ready. Um, so this is kind of a, a scrubber thing that's good for scrubbing off some really stubborn stuff. A mask for when I'm doing the stuff inside because it gets really nasty with all the uh, ash and stuff. Just a dustpan and brush. And this, I did have a proper brush for going down the flue, but I'm gonna have to use this improvised thing, which is a toilet brush attached to a pole because it appears that my other flue brush has gone missing, which is a bit annoying. I think somebody might have nicked it. Right, first I'm gonna do some stuff inside. Okay, here's my uh, lovely stove, got an Essie stove, which is awesome. Um, and this is where I'm gonna start with everything. I'm gonna basically lift this thing up and um, these things will come apart and then I'll be able to get inside and give it a good old clean. Uh, so I better get on with that. I was just up top sweeping this out just to give you an example of how much comes out when you do it. This whole thing is full of ash from the chimney. Crazy. Loads of it came out. It's all cleaned and put back together now as you can see. And one thing that was really useful, I forgot to mention actually, is one of these things. Uh, Hoover. Uh, yeah, that's really good for getting up the really small dust in all the corners and the edges and stuff that you can't quite reach. It's important to remember as well, I think, always I remind myself of the fact that you're not trying to make it absolutely spotless. This is more about making the stove more efficient and safe rather than making it spotlessly clean. Okay, uh, so I guess I need to uh, start painting the rust. So this is a rusty bit that I'm just dealing with. Just kind of trying to get rid of all the flaky bits first. I put the red oxide on. Watching this bit always gets a lot of wear and tear. All the ropes going through it. So yesterday I did some of the rust and today I'm going to try and uh, paint over it with some black. Um, we'll see how that goes because I think I'm going to have to do some of it in the canoe. So that'll be interesting. It's a difficult balancing act while in the canoe. So I'm actually in a canoe right now. It's all 
wobbling around quite a lot. This is something a little bit different today. Today I've uh, picked up a sofa bed and I've had to lug it all the way down the towpath because that's kind of the stuff you have to do when you're on a boat that is nowhere near your van. So yeah, hard work. Hopefully it'll look good when it's set up in the boat though. Hopefully it'll be all worth the effort. <laughs> So today I woke up to a familiar sound of chomping outside my uh, window and yeah it's true the cows are back um, so uh, you guys won't know but like there's this sort of herd of cows that lives in the field next to me and it's sort of I mean don't get me wrong I love the cows they're awesome but they are kind of also uh, they chew my ropes basically that's the short of it so I always have to chase them away when they start chewing my ropes so hopefully they won't be doing that this time. Uh, just have to keep an eye on them because they're pesky little buggers. So things are very different this morning from how they've been weather-wise for the last few days, for the last week or so. So it's uh, very misty, as you can see. There's an update on another Typical boring task. I just uh, went to collect some wood from my van and uh, collect a bit of water as well. And I'm doing it in a sort of a trolley thing that I have. And it's got a puncture, which I've just discovered halfway. So it's like particularly hard work. So yeah, fun times, boating. Now I'm just gonna cut the wood uh, and yeah, get it ready to burn on the fire. Okay, uh, so I've been resisting um, putting the fire on. I don't know really why. I just guess I've been trying to save wood or whatever, something ridiculous like that. Um, but yeah, this morning it's just got too cold, so I'm going to have my first fire of the autumn, I guess, because it's the start of autumn now. And so I thought you'd want to see the way I do it. Now, I guess every boater has their own things that they do when they light their fire, their own little idiosyncrasies, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people will have different ways of doing it for me. Um, and this is just the way I do it. Uh, I have some weird little stuff that I do that most other people, I don't know, some people might do, some people don't. I use dried orange skin as a fire lighter, uh, which is actually really good uh, for getting it going. And yeah, so I guess I better start building the fire then. things which might be I guess a little bit different that I use for lighting my fire it's my lighter itself um, it's like a USB chargeable uh, kind of uh, plasma lighter so the cool thing is as long as I remember to keep it charged then it never actually runs out of fuel um, so yeah that kind of just charge it up and then it makes this little spark and then obviously you do need some sort of little bit of paper or something to light but um, this has helped me out a lot of times when you know obviously you inevitably run out of matches and things like that. So yeah, it's quite a cool little thing, plasma lighter.
So the uh, fire is well and truly lit now and things are starting to warm up, which is quite exciting because uh, you forget if you haven't had a fire for a while how lovely it feels um, when the boat starts to warm up. So yeah, I'm quite enjoying this and I guess I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do with the rest of my day. So this morning I woke up to a quite an incredible view out the window, a really misty morning, um, very moody, uh, very evocative and it's one of those uh, views I guess that makes you really grateful for living this close to nature and I just wanted to share it with everybody so I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Cheers. Hey guys, so seeing as I did an intro to this video, I suppose I should do an outro as well. So how has this gone? Uh, it's been interesting, I've really enjoyed doing it actually and I think I won't be able to do it every week, that's definitely something I've realised. Um, but I'm going to try and do it as often as I can and just basically giving you an insight into what it's like uh, living on a narrowboat really and I hope you guys get something from it and if you have any questions then go on social media and just put it in the comments and I'll see what I can do, see if I can uh, answer some of them, maybe if it's something specific about something you want to see on the boat I might make a video about it, you never know. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.